Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome today. Welcome to this Wednesday Weekly Word. And I'm Jason here and we're continuing on prayer. Amen. So today I'm going to be giving you the word on how to get your prayers answered. Amen. How to get your prayers answered. So let's get into the word of God. And I trust that you've been blessed by this series. I hope you watched the previous, I believe it's two episodes, right? I did the one covering the Our Father prayer. You can see the link above, right? And there I showed you that the Our Father prayer is more of a pattern of prayer. Amen. Which we can even look at today. Uh, and then I also spoke on why you ought to pray. The reason why you ought to pray, isn't it? And that's mainly because of the authority that has been given unto us. Okay, so today I'm going to show you the keys on how to get your prayers answered. Amen. So I hope you got your Bible and your notepad. Most of all, your spiritual ears. Amen. As we get into this word. So the main thing, you know, even as I've seen uh, doing ministry, being in ministry, dealing with people. At times, you know, I, I speak to some people and they say to me, uh, my prayers are not being answered. And you know, then the, it's like the Holy Spirit will show me that this person is actually not even really giving time to prayer. You know, they'll say my prayers are not being answered or God is not answering me or, or God is not hearing me, the Father is not hearing me. And I'm like, okay, Father's not hearing what's happening. Then I realize that they are not actually spending time in prayer. They might be thinking something or wanting something to happen in their life. They'll be desiring for a change in a certain area and maybe they'll be crying to God or maybe they'll be thinking in their, in their mind or in their heart, just thinking to say, oh Lord, can you do something? Just like as a thought, you understand? I'm not saying there's no power in thoughts, there is. But you must understand that to get your, your prayers answered, you have to start off by praying by asking in prayer. And that is actually, you know, spending time, like I shared on the previous time, mostly when I'm dealing with prayer, what I'm going to speak on even today here is solo prayer, because I believe, yes, I believe in all different kinds of prayer. You can have prayer of agreement, you can have, uh, you know, group prayer and all this, uh, and, and all this sort of stuff. But the prayer life, it, it must be a personal thing, which is your life. That's why Jesus, when he said in Matthew 7, he said, when you pray, shut your door, isn't it? And, and pray to your father in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So there's something about that. This is how we ought to ask the father. Not to say you cannot ask him in other ways, but you have to spend time in prayer. Do you understand that? So many people, they already disqualify that their prayers are not answered because they just want to you know, just pray a two-second prayer or just a thought and think that uh, something's going to happen. So, start off by praying. The main thing, you have to pray. And I've seen people even who they may say they, they, they have weak faith or something of that sort, but they get answers because, they, you know, they, they speak to their Father. So, you must spend time speaking to your Father, praying, asking. Remember, prayer is not just talking to God, like I said, but it's making a... a a clear and direct petition, a, a clear request, you understand, to cause heaven to come on earth, to cause the kingdom of God to intervene in your situation. So let's read James chapter 4. Amen. We've been on James 4, I think, last week we're here again. James 4, verse 3. Okay, let's take it from verse 2. He says, you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. So that's the first thing where James is explaining to say, people try all sorts of trickery to get an answer. Then he says, but you don't have because you don't ask. So prayer is about asking. The first thing to get your prayers asked, answered sorry, is you must be asking. Isn't it? That's why verse 3 says, and when, look at verse 3. We'll get into this one here. He says, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. So that is like where someone says, oh, I asked the Lord again, you give me a big chocolate cake, something like that. He can give you the big chocolate cake, but if you just, you know, he says, when you ask amiss, you know, it's like a child who says, oh, uh, can I get a machine gun or something? Okay, maybe a machine gun is not a good example. Or a child who can pray and say, Lord, can I have a 10 liter tub of ice cream? You see, something like that to consume on your lust. So it's something which is a miss. What is a miss? It means it's missing the target. It's a request which is not in line with the will of God, isn't it? So it means for you to receive your prayers answered, you must 
ask right and then secondly you must ask in line with the will of god your prayer must be in line with the will of god isn't it if you know the will of god pray according to the will of god pray according to the will of your father and this is how you will get your prayers answered isn't it let's have a look at that in uh, matthew chapter number five i believe it is sorry no matthew chapter six this was in the our father prayer again and jesus said in this is in matthew 6 verse 10 he said when you pray right let's take it from verse number nine after this manner therefore pray you our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven so before even i speak on praying according to the will that was going to be number two let's draw it back again understand that god is your father I trust you're born again. If you're not born again, ask Jesus in your life right now and get born again. Ask him to come into your life as your Lord and Savior, right? So after you've done that, right, which is by prayer again, after you've done that, you must understand the person who you're asking from is your father. That's why Jesus gave the pattern of prayer. Imagine at that point in time, the believers didn't actually have a, a right to call God their father because they could not yet be born again because Jesus was not yet crucified. But when he was crucified, rose from the dead. Now, when you come in prayer, after you've received Christ, you must understand that he's your father. And what does a father do? That's why Jesus even explained further down, I believe, in Matthew chapter 6. Let's have a look at it. Matthew chapter 6. Let's take it from... Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 6. Where can I read from? Let's take it from verse number 26, right? He says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Hallelujah. You understand that? So he's saying that even the the birds, the birds receive, you know, what they'll be asking for, the birds receive. But he says, we are even more valuable to them. You remember Jesus even explained and he said, which of you here, he called the people saying they were evil. That was because they were not yet born again, not saying that they were wicked. But he said, which of you here uh, being evil, if your son asks you for bread, will you give him a stone? And if he asks you for a fish, will you give him a serpent, a snake? And There's no man in their right mind, a normal father, who if their child asks them for bread will give them a stone or ask them for fish will give them a snake. So you must understand that when you come in prayer, that you are praying to your father. And a father, your father is a loving father. And more so, this father is a father of love. So for you to receive answers to your prayer, know now who you're praying to. You understand? Because some people, they come, you know, that religion can rob them from receiving answers to their prayer because they come thinking they're praying to this uh, strong judge or something of that sort, you know, who's just ready to strike them with his arm, you know. Like like, uh, the shepherd's stuff is not for striking the sheep, but it's for for striking um, the, 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 the wild animals that want to attack the sheep. You understand that? But it's said, okay, some shepherds, they beat up the sheep, which should not be so. You understand this? So understand that your father is the good shepherd and he desires what is best for you. So when you come in prayer, know that you are approaching someone who is just waiting to give you. Jesus said it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So he's just waiting for you to come and ask so that he can bless you. You understand? So that he can answer your prayer. He's waiting for you to ask. That's why even here, Jesus said in Matthew 6, uh, verse number 8, He said, Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask Him. You see that? You are saying that your Father knows what you need even before you ask Him. So it means He he just wants you to ask. And remember, I covered this in the video we did last week on why you should pray. Because someone will be like, Oh, if He knows what I need, then why should I pray? Because he has given authority unto man. It's like how someone will say, okay, I, I, I believe that, uh, that, that God is all powerful, but why did he let that thing happen? You understand? I once did a video on that, on why did, that, why did God allow that to happen? You can watch that video. It's not that God allowed that thing to happen. You understand? 
is because he has given authority onto man. And if man does not call upon his power to make a change, nothing will happen, isn't it? Like John Wesley said, he, he came to the realization that unless man prays, he believes God cannot do anything. You understand that? So, yes, God is able to do something, but it requires faith. Someone to ask in faith to receive the answer. Okay. So, more importantly, know that you're speaking to a father who's ready to give you that thing. But you have to ask because that's the, the rule of the spirit. That he cannot just do something unless there they is that uh, authority of man to bring that thing onto earth, isn't it? It's like our spirits cannot function on this earth unless they have a body. You understand? That's why you get demons wanting to jump into into people and whatever to try and function on this earth yet they are illegal that's why we cast them out we are cast out any foul spirit back to hell in jesus name amen praise the lord so know that when you ask for your prayers to be answered you have a father who is love who is ready to respond to you isn't it to respond to you and to bring an answer to your prayer so ask him and then know who you're asking. You're asking from your father. Who is a giving father? Hallelujah. The, the Bible says in, in Romans 8, is it? It says that he who spared not his own son, how will he not with him freely give us all things? Isn't it? That should be Romans chapter 8. Praise the Lord. Verse number 32. Look what it says. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So understand that your heavenly father is more desiring even to answer you than you are ready even to ask. But he needs you to ask in prayer to activate the power. Amen. To activate that change. So keep asking. Know who you're asking. And know that the one who you're asking is able to bring you an answer, isn't it? And even if we continue in looking in the order of because um, you'll be like, how does God hear prayer? you got to be saved. Like I said, you got to be born again. When you're born again in Christ, then you can ask Him and He's ready to give to you, isn't it? But everything functions by authority. That's why I said, okay, we saw there in Matthew 6 that He said, even in the pattern of prayer of the Our Father, He said you should pray and say, Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done. And basically, his kingdom is his will. Because where the word of a king is, there is power. So whatever is the word of the king, and the king is the king of kings, Jesus. Whatever is his word, is his will. Isn't it? That's why he says he's even he's put his word above his name. Because you get to know someone's truthfulness and character by their word. Isn't it? Not just by how they are called, but by their word. So he has got that word of truth hallelujah which will show you his will and what is his will so when you pray you must pray in line with the will of god and what is the will of god the will of god is that not that any should perish but that all should come unto salvation so you can pray for salvation of souls and you know that the will of god like i said to you jesus said it is the father's desire to give you the kingdom and then we also get even if you don't know many scriptures just knowing that the father loves you and desires the best for you that's his will that's third John chapter two. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So you know that your heavenly father wants you to prosper and he wants you to be in health. Even as your soul, your mind, your thoughts, your emotions are prospering. He wants your body to prosper. He wants you to prosper in all things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when you pray, Pray in line with the will of God. Remember even Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was about to be crucified, he prayed and said, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But then he prayed something else. You know, that was where he, he was making a request if something could be done. And he was like, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You understand? Because it was the will of the Father. You know, Isaiah says it pleased the Father to bruise him. Why? Because when he was bruising his son, it was bringing healing for those who would believe that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed, isn't it? So, you must understand that the will of God is your health, is your prosperity, and is even like, as the word of God says, is giving thanks. That's the will of God, 1 Thessalonians 5. And how do you give thanks? Remember, I said to you, even prayer, there's prayer of thanksgiving. You thank the Father. And someone who is thankful always uh, receives more, isn't it? 
So 1 Thessalonians, let's read it, chapter 5, verse number 18. Is it first? Yeah. 1 Thessalonians 5. Look at this. He says, let's take 17. He says, pray without ceasing, or even from 16. Rejoice forevermore. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Hallelujah. You see that? So it's a continual thing. Don't quench the spirit. Keep on praying. Keep on giving thanks. This is the will of God, that you keep on giving thanks, isn't it? So even when you pray, you thank the Father for the life you have. You, you know, a prayer of thanks always brings multiplication. Like I said to you, Jesus, he prayed with, for, before Lazarus rose from the dead. He just said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. Isn't it? It was a prayer where he was showing to the people that he's speaking to his Father and that they can see the power that will come out afterwards. Even when the boys uh, brought his, his uh, five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus broke the bread and gave thanks to the Father. He just blessed it and gave thanks, isn't it? And then multiplication came. So that's the will of the Father, that you always pray in thanksgiving. Because many times people just come and they pray to the Father when they want something, when they need a breakthrough, when they need a change. Yes, it's important to pray for, to pray that the power of God comes in your situation. But how about when everything is fine and it doesn't seem there's anything wrong? Pray a prayer of thanksgiving, isn't it? Maybe you'll be like, okay, uh, now everything's fine. Uh, there's no emergencies. Uh, I've got no issues. Uh, there's no reason for me to pray. No, that's the time that you got to pray and say, thank you, Father, for peace in my life. Thank you, Father, for providing and meeting my every need. Thank you, Lord, that I'll continually see your faithfulness, isn't it? And then you pour out more and more. You activate more and more of the grace of God in your life, isn't it? So you got to pray thankfully. So that's the will of God. Hallelujah. And the will of God, it functions, like I said, by His word and by authority. Remember John, even when they came to John the Baptist and they said, hey, John, the Jesus, who you said is the, is the Lamb of God, he's baptizing more people than you. Then what did John say? Look at what John said. So you can understand that the only answers, the only blessing or light or any form of gifts, good gifts comes from the Father up above. That is John chapter 3, verse number 26. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with you beyond Jordan, to whom you bear witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. Look at John's answer. Verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Hallelujah. So for you to receive anything, you know, even some people who are not born again, who are not even living a righteous life, that which they receive is by the mercy of God. You know, Proverbs says that he causes his son to rise on the good and the evil. He causes his rain to come down on the good and the evil. So every good gift and every perfect gift, like James chapter 1 verse 17 says, comes down from the Father of lights, isn't it? Let's read that scripture. This is where uh, blessing comes from. So you must know that when you're praying, you have a good father and understand that by his authority, the only way answers can come. Anything other than that is not from the Lord and it will not last <laughs> because it's not genuine, isn't it? There's no funny other styles of doing things, witchcraft or whatever, palm reading or whatever, and you think something's going to come out or you do this and this happens and you say this. And... No, if it's not according to truth, not according to the authority of uh, the kingdom of God, it will not stand because the kingdom of God rules over all, isn't it? Like Daniel saw in the vision, he saw that stone which came and it grew and grew and grew and smashed every other kingdom, isn't it? That's why Jesus said that uh, upon this rock you will build his church, isn't it? Meaning the revelation that he is the Christ and Jesus is that rock, isn't it? And remember even Moses got water from a rock. Now I'm really giving you quite a bit here. You watch it over and get it. Moses got water from a rock and that rock is Christ. And then Jesus said, Whoever will fall upon this rock, that's someone who comes against that rock, which comes against the truth of the word, which comes against Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. Whoever comes against it will be broken. Whoever comes against it will be broken. But it says, on whomsoever that rock shall descend, it will grind him to powder, meaning that they will become nothing. You understand this kind of thing? So have a look at this here. Have a look at this. And that's what Moses even did. You remember the rock also reflects the law. Moses crushed that uh, cow which they, which they had made, that molten calf, isn't it? And he crushed it into powder and made them drink it. 
the children of Israel drink it. You understand that? For their disobedience. So understand the authority of God is supreme. The authority of your Heavenly Father. So when you pray, know that you're praying to the source because Father also means source, Abba. But understand His authority that no one can receive anything except the authority of God allows it. Isn't it? I'm reminded of another scripture. We'll come back here to uh, James. But let's look at Luke. <laughs> let's look at Luke. Sorry, no. Let's look at John. <laughs> let's look at John. Sorry. John chapter 19. This was uh, Pilate. Just before he was about to have Jesus crucified, he said something to Jesus when they went private. He was saying to Jesus, come on, say something to me. Don't you know I can help you? You know, something like that. Let's have a look at it. John chapter 19, right? Verse number, I think you take it from 11, yeah? Let's check it there. John chapter 19 from verse number 10. Let's see what he said. Then said Pilate unto him, speakest thou not unto me? Knowest you not that I have power to crucify you and I have power to release you? The word which is translated as power there is exosia, which means authority. So Pilate was saying to Jesus, Hey, why are you not speaking to me? Don't you know I have authority to release you or I have authority to have you crucified? Then listen to the response of Jesus. Jesus answered, You could have no power at all against me except it were given you from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto you has the greater sin. And from then forth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. So Pilate, after he heard Jesus say, You have got no power over me, no authority over me, except it was given from above. He realized this statement was something which shook him. And he said, i got to release this man. Because he's got someone who is seeing seems to be in a weak state, but can still speak something so boldly to say, you have no authority over me except what was given to you from above. You understand that. So what am I saying? For your prayer to be answered, understand and function and flow in the authority of God. And functioning and flowing in the authority of God is praying in line with His word and His will. Okay. James 1.17, that's why it says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Isn't it? So, God doesn't change his mind about things when he says this is how things ought to function, that's how they ought to function, and that's how answers to your prayer will come. Isn't it? So, going according to his authority is coming to him in truth. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, if you remember you have anything, uh, if your brother, in fact, he said, if you remember your brother has something against you, Leave your gift at, uh, at the altar and go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come back and offer your gift, isn't it? And remember, prayer is, is, is a communication. So you are wanting to receive from the Father. So it's very important that if you know there's something which is contrary to the will of God in life, you know, someone will be like, how can I uh, come fully clean? Understand righteousness is a gift. Right? Righteousness is a gift, but the Holy Spirit will convict you. The Holy Spirit will 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 convict you if there's anything amiss in your life. Maybe you, you've been fighting with someone, now you're coming to pray to the Lord to help you in this situation. And then you see like, why is this prayer not an answer? Why is it things are not moving? Maybe it's because there's something which is not right in your, in your life. The Father wants to answer your prayer, but because you've got such anger maybe, or you are not forgiving someone over something, then the Spirit of God can't flow there, you understand? can't flow fully, freely. It might be in portions just because of His mercy and His grace that there's a flow coming. But as long as there's that root of bitterness, you understand? As long as there's that root of bitterness, then the Spirit of God cannot flow freely there. You cannot receive answers to your prayers there because it's against the will of God. He does not function in darkness. You understand this? So when you realize, when you come to pray, that's why Jesus even gave that pattern of prayer. And He said, Give us this day our daily bread, verse 12. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Isn't it? So that's the thing. Like I said to you, uh, Acts 13, I believe it is. We, uh, let's have a look at it. I believe it's Acts 13, verse 8. You don't have to ask for forgiveness now. This prayer was before the cross. That's why Jesus said, Say, forgive us. Ask for forgiveness of your debts. Isn't it? But Acts 13, verse 8, what does it say? Uh, okay, it's not... Acts 13 verse 8. 
okay right acts 13 verse 38 sorry it says be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins so not ask for forgiveness but the forgiveness of sins which is why that part of the pattern of prayer in the our father which says forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors you don't have to ask for forgiveness but you receive forgiveness but it's important that you must forgive people who have wronged you so at times your prayers may be hindered because you have not forgiven someone out there you're holding some unforgiveness then maybe your prayer might not be getting answered but when you release that person the spirit of god can flow and work in you isn't it there's no root of bitterness which is in you which can trouble you isn't it but you can flow and you see the spirit of god can flow nicely in you and through you and you get your answers isn't it and this is what the father desires that's his will that's again going according to his authority isn't it praise the lord that is let's go to mark chapter okay we'll come back to mark chapter 11 right but i want you to understand the authority so i said you must ask then you must understand who you're asking you're asking your father so you must ask that's what prayer is, how to get answers to your prayer. Make sure you are actually praying, not just thinking something, but praying. Then realize who you're speaking to. you asking your Father, your Heavenly Father, isn't it? Then understand His will. What is His will? What is His desire? What is His word? You know He wants you healthy. You know He wants you prosperous. You know He wants you blessed, isn't it? You must pray His will. Then you understand that it is His authority that functions and which is above all. That no one can receive anything except it comes from the Father isn't it? And this is where you get your breakthroughs and your answers for your prayer, isn't it? That's four. Then five, I was saying here, you should come with a pure and a clean heart, isn't it? Unforgiveness out. You forgive all people when you come and you pray unto them. You have got forgiveness in your heart, isn't it? And let's have a look at First Peter. 3 verse 12 because it's kind of like the same like saying if you're praying with a, a bitter heart or unforgiveness your prayers may be hindered but uh, this one is similar but not exactly the same let's go to first peter chapter number three and verse number 12 all right you must be born again isn't it but first peter 3 12 says for the eyes of the lord are, are over the righteous so anyone who's born again is righteous and his ears are open to their prayers but the face of the lord is against them that do evil so if you are born again you should not be in remember like jesus said what fellowship has light with darkness isn't it? he said you can't drink the cup of the lord and the cup of devils so if you're born again now and you're saved in christ you can't now start dwelling in some things of darkness or mixing light and darkness and then thinking that your prayers will be answered isn't it no you can't do that isn't it you have received righteousness as a gift, isn't it? It doesn't mean if you do something wrong, then immediately God won't answer your prayer. No. Righteousness is a, is a gift. You can't become more righteous than you already are. I wrote a book on, on that, on righteousness, to give you understanding of that. So there's nothing you can do to add to your righteousness. Righteousness is a gift from the Lord, isn't it? But now when you pray, if you are consciously doing uh, wicked things, things which are not of God, and at the same time trying to play a little bit in the light and play a bit in the dark it will cause a blockage it will cause your prayers not to be answered it will cause a blockage isn't it so to remove those blockages is to get rid of the darkness isn't it and no when you consciously see okay yeah i have an issue you can even pray to the lord help me get this darkness because the holy spirit will show you like how he'll show you with unforgiveness to say hey hey how about that that person who you're not talking to you see then you've got to cut that out and, and say, Lord, help me make peace with that person. If you make the attempt to make peace and the person doesn't want to receive peace, then pray for them that they can receive peace, isn't it? Matthew 18 shows us the resolution for conflict resolution. I once gave that word, isn't it? You can check it in Matthew 18. But now that's unforgiveness. Now, if it's something which you're doing wrong, which you're conscious of, it says that, uh, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, isn't it? But he's ears are open to the prayer of the righteous so you got to get back in line isn't it and that's once again the will of god hallelujah in the will of god that is where something will come through amen praise the lord this is where we will see the answer to our prayers and that is also john if you remember there's a blind man who was healed 
by Jesus. And they brought this man in for questioning. The Pharisees came and they made like a conference <laughs> questioning this man. Say, who's that man who healed you? He's a sinner and all this. And they said he's wicked. And the man was like, hey, I don't know who he is, but all I know is I was blind and I can see. And they kept asking questions. They said, give God the glory. We know this man is a sinner and all this kind of thing. And, you know, he was like, what do you guys want? Are you also his disciples? And they were like, no, we are the disciples of Moses. And the conversation kept going on and on. But there's something amazing that uh, this formerly blind man uh, said to these Pharisees as they quizzed him. Let's look at this. John chapter 9, verse number 31. Look at what he answered and said to them when they were asking him all these questions, saying that Jesus is a sinner and he's not of God. John 9 verse 31, this was the blind man's answer. It says, Now we know that God hears not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God and does his will, him he hears. Praise the Lord. So if anyone is a worshipper of God and does his will, his prayers are answered. That's basically what you're saying. Because Jesus uh, got that man to see again. To see, actually, because he was born blind, isn't he? And that's even in Matthew 6, the first thing of the Our Father said, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's worship. So as you spend time in worship, your prayer, because worship can also, prayer can, can also be a form of worship. As you're praying, you can actually be worshiping. So if you're someone, you want to see your prayers answered, you should be someone who already has a relationship with your Father and is a worshiper of your God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. A worshiper of Him. Hallelujah. And doing his work, that is being in righteousness, isn't it? You are righteous, but consciously, if you see there's something you're missing, something which is wrong, and the, the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit shows you to say, hey, this thing, you need to stop it. And then you just ignore and say, ah, oh, okay, whatever, I'm going to pray. Lord, help me with this situation as I go to work today. Yet the Holy Spirit has showed you there's something in your life which needs correcting. Isn't Goodness and mercy follow you, but the Holy Spirit is there uh, as, your, as your counselor. You understand? To show you where you're missing it. It's not every time for someone, like, you know, some people, they fear prophets, especially those prophets uh, who, can I say, haven't yet grasped the truth of mercy. And they start pointing out people's wrongs and say, oh, you over there, yesterday you did this. <laughs> and I see you living in sin and all this. No, no, no. That should not be done in public, is it? Unless if somehow, but I don't believe the Lord will give that uh, right to say, um, expose someone because love covers a multitude of sins isn't it but of course the word of god says open rebuke is better than secret love but i believe that is a rebuke which is done in a way which will uh, you know not to put someone to public shame in front of everyone but to correct them in love like how jesus met the woman at the well when when he said to her, i see you've had five wives five husbands and the one you're with is not yours but is someone else's isn't it? he did not expose her in public in front of everyone but he spoke to the woman uh, when they were one on one, you understand it. So I believe that's what you do as a minister of the gospel. So, as I'm saying here, the Holy Spirit will show you what you're doing wrong, and then it's up to you now to line it up so that you can be seen as someone who's a worshiper of God and who does His work, and then God will answer your prayers. Hallelujah! He will answer your prayers because He's your Father and He desires to answer your prayers. Hallelujah! So. We've got to ask Him, right? We've got to know He's our Father, right? We've we got, we got to pray in line with the will of God, right? That's number three. Uh, can I remember all these points? Some of them have been just coming to me as I've been speaking. So you pray in line with the will of, of your Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And you understand that He's the one with authority to bring answers to your prayers. Get rid of all unforgiveness or bitterness. Get rid of anything uh, which is against uh, the truth of God in your life, anything which is unrighteous, once the Holy Spirit brings it to your attention, pray about it. Make that conscious effort to correct that thing, that bad sin or whatever it is, so you continue, you don't have your garment uh, spotted by the flesh, isn't it? That's when it's, you know, some holy uh, lust which is coming to slow you down, isn't it? Get rid of the darkness. No fellowship with light and darkness, isn't it? You stay fellowshipping in the light, in the presence of God. This is how you will see answers to your prayers flowing even better. Because how can you say you come to the Lord? Let's say He asks you to do something or He asks you to stop doing something. And then you come and you're asking Him for something. Just as a father, you'll be like, but son, 
I've said to you, you need to stop doing this thing. Or can you please start doing this instead of that? And then you come and say, oh yeah, but I need this. Yes, he can still answer your prayer, but it will not really flow. You understand? By his mercy, he can answer your prayer, but it will not really flow. You understand this? But when you consciously make that effort and he sees it, then you allow truth to flow and you see the power of God flowing through you. So God doesn't hear sinners, but if any man is a worshiper of him and does his will, him he does hear. Hallelujah. And the main thing about prayer, like we said, you have not because you ask not. So we're dealing with answered prayer. You got to keep on praying. Don't stop just because uh, you haven't seen anything yet. Like, let's look at this. Matthew 7, verse number 7. It says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened unto him. Hallelujah. So you got to keep on asking. you got to keep on knocking. Don't stop. Because you haven't yet seen something. Keep on asking, isn't it? Keep on asking and that's how you'll get the result. Keep on asking. And how must you ask? You must ask in faith. Matthew uh, 21 verse 22 says, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. That is also we can take Mark 11, uh, 22. It says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Mark 11, 24. That's the key thing. It says, When you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. And how do you believe that you receive? You you see it as done. That is faith. That the moment you pray, you say, this thing is done. Not because you see it in the natural or you feel it in the natural or you hear it in the natural, but in your spirit, you know, I've prayed this. I I receive it. You know. You know it by faith that, ah, thank you, Father. You've answered me on this thing. He says, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. So faith, praying and asking in faith is another, is the key. I can even say it's the, of all, it's, it's, it's one which brings results. Because faith is the receiver. Hallelujah. Like Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to him must come believing that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So prayer, to get answers to your prayers, it's about diligently seeking him. Meaning like constantly seeking him. Being persistent in prayer. You can't just pray one minute and say, or think a thought and say, oh God, help me with this situation in my school. And then you, you've thought the thought and then you think an answer will come. No, you must be persistent in prayer. You think, oh well, uh, this marriage issue, Lord, help me. And I pray uh, and you pray for 30 seconds or one minute and you say, Lord, help bless my marriage and make a change. And then you go, no. He says that diligently seek him. And when you pray, believe you receive, isn't it? Is Don't quit. Don't quit. You must have faith, and then as well, be persistent. So the main thing there is faith. That's how you receive by faith. And then Luke chapter 18, another way of getting your prayers answered. Be persistent. Let's read this parable. We touched on it last time, but let's read it this time. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. And he spoke unto them, he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. So this is the next point. Pray persistently. Don't quit. Don't fail. For you to get answers to your prayers, don't just pray once. Keep on praying constantly. Verse 2. He said, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, nor regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continuous coming she wearies me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? He's patient with them. Verse number 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? So it's your faith. You know, at times people quit. 
They pray, pray, pray for something. Then they're like, oh, this thing's not coming. They were standing in faith, but after some time, they, they see like it's not happening. Then they drop their faith. And what happens if you drop your faith? You won't receive the answer, isn't it? Because it's your faith which is the receiver. Excuse me. It's your faith which is the receiver, like how my voice wanted to go. If you drop your faith, then your receiver is gone. It's like if you're on a phone call, you have to receive, isn't it? Your receiver, your antenna, whatever, these modern day cell phones are a bit different. The receiver, you can't really see it like back in the day when it had a big area. But once your receiver goes, you cannot receive commun communication, right? From that phone. Hallelujah. This voice is healed in Jesus' name. I receive now by faith. So you can't receive communication if the receiver is gone. So it's the same with faith. The moment you drop your faith, you cannot receive answers to your prayers. So you have to continue in, um, in prayer. Don't stop. That's why he says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So that is how you get your prayers answered. So the main thing, basically, to summarize everything short, know who you're praying to, your Father. You come in faith. You come in truth. You come with a clean, pure heart, naked and open to Him to say, Father, this is the issue. This is what I have. And if at that moment when you come to pray, the Holy Spirit convicts you in your heart, says, hey, you need to speak to so-and-so about that. Or you need to uh, please change your life in this area, whatever. He'll help you to do it, isn't it? He'll help you because the Holy Spirit is there to help you. Then you, you realize, you acknowledge, okay, I got that thing, I got to clear that up. And you clear it up so that the power of God can flow. You know that all power belongs to Him. All authority stems from Him, flows through Him. He's the giver of gifts. He's the giver of life. Then you know, this is where I'm going to get any answer. It's not going to come from my boss. It's not going to come from my rich uncle. It's not going to come from anyone else. It's not going to come from them seeing me at church or not seeing me. It's not going to come from whoever else, from my coach or whatever. It's only going to come from my heavenly father. It may come through them, but the source is my father. Who is your heavenly father? Hallelujah. And you pray like that. And you don't pray once. You keep on praying. Remain persistent. Jesus said you must remain persistent because even a wicked person, when they are constantly nagged, they, they answer the person, like he said, as a wicked judge, isn't it? And husbands, remember, love your wives. Uh, there's another one for husbands. It also goes into the righteousness one. Okay, let's just put it on there. We can just touch on that one for the marriage uh, couple. Maybe there's a husband there who's saying, hey, how come my prayers are not being answered? Maybe this is your issue. <laughs> let me just put it in. This is just a bonus one. 1 Peter 3, verse number 7, right? It says, Likewise, you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together with the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So you see that your prayers can be hindered if you don't, uh, you know, hear from your wife well. You don't treat her well, isn't it? So that's the same. It kind of like goes in the righteousness part, but it's, I just put it there. You know, it also says that uh, the one who stops his ears. Okay, let's read that one as well. Uh, it's also part of maybe if you're missing, asking a miss or something not right in your life. You know, Proverbs 21, I think it's verse 13. Uh, if it's not, I'll just quote you the scripture, right, on how to get your prayer answered. Proverbs 20 verse 13 says, Whoever stops his ears at the cry of the poor shall he also shall cry himself and shall not be heard. You see that? So it's also part, it's one of those things on like, you know, righteousness. Maybe you've been neglecting people, but now you want God to hear you. Or you've been neglecting the poor, now you want God to hear you. You've been neglecting your wife, or even you've been neglecting your husband, and now you want God to hear you and answer your prayers. So it's that point which I mentioned earlier. It also falls into that one of, you know, having a pure heart and coming in righteousness. Uh, so if you have an error on those things, just correct it. But mainly, be persistent. Come with a clean heart, pure heart. Come genuine. And let it be in secret. Like Matthew 6 said, Your Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. Okay, let's read. We can read that one in closing. The Holy Spirit saying to me, Read it, read it. Why don't you read? Okay, let's read it in closing. So that's the main thing. Because like I said, this prayer got to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, you can have your prayer group and all that and, and prayer club, but when you're serious with God and He sees you serious with Him, is when you separate and make time. It's like when you go on a date, you set a date and you make time for the two 
of you to meet and spend time and chat some with him. So this is how your prayer should also be. Matthew 6 verse 6, But when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this is how you get the answers to your prayers. I also myself, I hear this word and I'll keep on following it as well so I can also get answers to my prayers. And one of my prayers is that you pray for me, isn't it? That I continue to minister this word and see the goodness of God. Amen. Lord. So have a blessed day. I trust you're blessed by this. If you have a question on Christianity or this Bible walk, send it to me and I'll answer you. And the top questions, I'll upload a video uh, on Fridays. Amen. God bless you. If this blessed you, just subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, share this with someone. Amen. And I'll be back again with another awesome word from the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you haven't received salvation in Jesus Christ, say this prayer with me right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died for me and that you rose from the dead. I declare that I am saved and born again. I am your child. In Jesus' name, Amen. Subscribe and follow on social media platforms, on YouTube, The Word of Truth, Jason Paul Pullen, on all your podcasting platforms, The Word for Today with Jason Pullen, Spotify, Audible, Acast, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can also follow us on Instagram, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Facebook, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Twitter at the word of underscore truth. There's free books available in the link below as well as on Amazon.com. If you'd like to partner with me, you can go to PayPal, paypal.me forward slash jpj or via scroll jpjs at gmail.com. Send an email, the word of truth publications at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Amen.